All right, guys, so in this video, we're going to work on the new employee component. So I'm going to go ahead and close these two here, and we're going to open up components and then new employee dot view. So from here, oh, that's view, I want new employee. So what we're going to do is first build out the form of the UI. So we're going to keep the H3 here and underneath. Let's put a class of row. OK, remember, we're using materialize. We're going to have a form tag, it's not going to have an action. What it's going to have is an event handler. So we're going to say at submit. And then we can also do dot prevent, which will prevent the form from actually submitting. And we're going to set this to a function that we're going to create or a method we're going to create called save employee. And then let's also just give this a class of call and then S12, so a 12 column. All right, and then inside the form, we're going to have a row for each field. So inside the row, we'll have a class of input dash field, as well as a class of call, as well as a class of S12. And inside here, we'll have our input, which will be the type of text. Now we want to bind our data here. So we're going to say V model V dash model. And which is similar to ng model if you come from an angular background and we're going to set this to employee underscore ID. We're, all going, we're also going to add some validation here and make this required. Oops. So under that we'll put a label. We don't need a four just a label and then we're going to say employee ID number. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to save that. And now you'll see we have our field here. We're going to get an error because of this. It doesn't yet know what this is, but don't worry about that yet. So we're going to have a couple other fields. So I'm going to copy this div with the class of row. And we're going to go ahead and put in three more. So under the employee employee ID, we're going to have the name. We're going to change the V model to name as well. And let's see, the next one will be the department. So I'm going to change the label to department. We'll change the V model to DEPT. And then let's see, we're going to change the last one to position. And we'll change the V model to position. So that gives us all our fields. Now we need a button. So we're going to go under the last row which is right here and we're going to put in a button and I'm going to give this a type of submit and let's also give it a class of BTN and we'll just say submit. We're also going to have a cancel button to go back. Now that's going to be a router link to the home page. So we'll say to slash we'll give this a class of BTN and BT um, gray and we'll say cancel. So let's save that and there's our form. Now what we want to do is go down here. We want to bring in our database. So bring in our Firebase init. So we're going to say import DB from dot slash Firebase init and we're going to go into our data return. And just like we did on the view page, we're going to initially set everything to null. So ID will be null, name null, department null, and position null. Okay, and then we're going to have some methods. So we'll go with the data ends and say methods. And this is where we want to create our save employee. So to save the employee, we want to take the DB dot collection. We want our employees collection. So employees and then we're going to call dot add. So inside this dot add, we're going to have an object that will have all the fields. So employee ID and we're going to set that to this dot employee ID. Now this employee ID is, is going to be bound to 
this V model. So whatever we put in this input is going to be what what is in this right here. Same with all the other fields. So we'll say name. We'll set that to this dot name. We'll set the department and we'll set the position as well. Okay, now this add is, is also going to return a promise just like get. So we're going to say dot then. And inside here, let, it's, let's say doc reference. And we're going to set this to a code block. And all I want to do here is redirect. So I'm going to say this dot router, money sign router dot push. And let's just redirect to slash. Okay, now you can also do the dot catch if something goes wrong. So we can say catch and we can say error and we can set that to just whatever console log the error. Actually, we should be able to do this without curly braces as well like that. All right, so let's try it out. Let's save, let's reload, and we'll go ahead and try and add an, a new employee. So right now we just have, if I hit cancel, we just have John Doe in IT. So whoop, let's go and click the plus button. Let's add zero, zero, what was his ID? Zero, zero, one, so we'll do zero, zero, two. Name, we'll say Sarah. Williams and sales and we'll say sales lead and submit and there we go Sarah Williams if I reload she's still there so adding is is pretty easy now what I want to do is the edit so if we go to the view page I want to have a little button down here just like we have the add button but I want it to be an edit button so let's copy from the what is it um, the dashboard up here in the markup we have this fixed a action button we're gonna grab that copy it and bring it over to view employee dot view and we're gonna put this right below the delete button like that now the link is gonna be different since we're using a parameter we need to do a bind so we're gonna say v bind we want to vbind to and then set that to some curly braces and the name. So the name is going to be edit dash employee, which we defined in the router. And then the params will be an object. And we want to say, <clears throat> excuse me, employee ID. We want to set that to employee ID. Okay like that. So that's our router link. And let's see the icon. I just want to change it from plus to pencil because it's an edit. So we'll save that. And now we have an edit button. If we reload this, we'll see the data. So we click edit brings us to the edit page. So for the edit page, the form is going to be the same as far as the markup. So let's copy what we have in the new employee view. So we'll copy uh, everything that's in the div so from there to there and we'll put it in the edit uh, yeah let's open up edit employee actually we didn't need to copy the h3 so we'll paste this in we'll get rid of this so that's our edit form now the submit isn't going to go to save employee. We're going to have a function called update employee. Now the rest of this can stay the same, um, except something goes wrong with the materialized form. If we have a value in these inputs and then we have a label, the label is on top of the value so you can't see it. So what I'm going to do is get rid of the labels. I'm sure there's another solution, but um, this is the easiest one I could figure out. So we'll just get rid of those labels. 
and so let's see submit that'll stay the same this will stay the same and now we're going to go down here to the script so again we have to import our database So we'll say Firebase init and inside the data return, we're going to set everything to null. And this is actually going to be very similar to the view. Actually, I could probably just copy everything from view employee because we want to use this before route enter. We want to use the watch and we want to use the fetch data. Okay, we don't need the delete employee, but I'm just going to copy from, let's see, that ends here, that ends there, and then the methods ends purple one right here. So let's grab from here to here and copy. Okay, then we'll go right under the data and paste that in. And we can get rid of the entire delete employee. We don't need that and that comma. Uh, the rest of this stuff, let's see, before route enter. Um, yeah, that's going to be that's all going to be the same. Then we want to fetch the data. Uh, yeah, fetch the data. Then we're setting the properties. And these properties are going to be linked to these V models in the form. So they should fill the, the inputs in the form. So let's go ahead and save this and reload. And there we go. So now we have the form filled. If we go to John Doe, and go to edit, we have all of his fields filled in here. So now we want to handle the actual update, which is when we click submit. So in addition to fetch data, which ends right here, we're going to put in update employee. So for this, uh, let's see, we could actually copy the fetch data, collect this DB collection which ends here. I'm going to grab that because we want to first get it. We want to get the correct employee, get the snapshot. We want to do query snapshot for each. And then instead of doing this, instead of just setting properties like this, we're going to say doc dot ref dot update. Okay. Just like remember we did doc dot ref dot delete. We're going to do update and then pass in an object. And we're going to say we want to update, for instance, the employee ID set to this dot employee ID, which is whatever is in the input. OK, remember, this is bound to the input. So we want that. We want the name set to this dot name, the department and the position. And then this it will also give us a promise. So the update, we're going to say dot then. And let's see inside here, we'll just do an arrow like that. And let's go ahead and redirect. Now, I don't want to redirect home. I want to redirect back to this actual employees page. So what we'll do is we'll say this dot money sign router. So we'll access the router and we'll do a push. Except we want to pass in here some curly braces and we want to say the name of the the route, which is going to be view dash employee. And then we want the params. So we want to go comma params and set employee underscore ID to this dot employee underscore ID. Actually, you know what I'm going to do, though, I'm going to I'm going to make the ID field disabled because I don't want them to be able to edit the ID. 
So for the input, let's just put in disabled and reload. And now we can't actually edit the ID, which is good. Okay, so back down to our update. So it should just redirect us back to that particular user. So John Doe, let's say he switched from a database admin to a server admin. Let's submit. And now it redirects us back to John Doe and you can see he's now a server admin. So we were able to update his info. All right, so we now have a full CRUD application. So in the next video, which will be the final video for now, I'm not sure if we'll add on to this later, but I want to show you how we can easily um, compile this application into just static assets and then go ahead and push it to GitHub pages and make it live.